Good morning and welcome to the BBC Schools News Report at the Cooperative Academy of Leeds. I'm your presenter Esther. And I'm Eamon. In today's news headlines, Ukraine in a summary, Stephen Lawrence Student Forum Assembly, Promoting Schools of Sanctuary, Year 11 Prom 2014, the Academy's Cats production and a look back at Diversity Theme Day. But first, on Wednesday 26th of March, thousands of schools in Wales and England were closed, some to certain year groups. The strike had joined picket lines in action over pay, pension and conditions. The strike was staged by the NUT, or National Union of Teachers. The strike was staged because of pressure given to teaching staff by the government and that the action was a clear demonstration of how teachers felt. They loved teaching, but were crushed with the long hours. In spite of this, because of many hard working teachers and heads, only 12% of the school across the country were closed that day. This is by far the lowest level of support for any national teacher strike since 2010. As a result of the NUT's actions on Wednesday, many schools were closed, while others had to cancel particular classes, depending on the proportion of NUT members of staff. Ukraine in a summary. The political unrest in Ukraine has dominated news reports for many months with stories of anti-government protests. Since last November, trouble has swept through Ukraine, a country which lies on Russia's western border. The previous Ukrainian president, Viktor Yanukovych, declined a trade agreement with the EU and sought closer ties with Russia. December saw over 300,000 people protesting in, Ukraine, in Kiev's Independence Square in retaliation to the new ties. Protests aggravated with over 80 deaths in one day. The situation grew worse in Crimea and Russian President Putin stepped in to help the Russians. He seized control of the region by using a referendum, but this led to many international outcries. Many sanctions have been lifted against Russia for breaching international law, and they have been kicked out of the G8. What will happen to Crimea? Only time will tell. The Stephen Lawrence Student Forum members will be holding an assembly at the Cooperative Academy of Manchester on the 1st of April as part of their Diversity Day. Stephen Lawrence was murdered in a racist attack on the 22nd of April 1993. I spoke to Mr Thompson, who will be accompanying the students to Manchester, and will be hearing from Tatiana, who wrote a poem about Stephen. This is Tatiana. She'll be reading you her Stephen Lawrence poem. Falling so low you can't get up. That's when you realise your time is tough. It's not your fault, but you still cry. You left sadness and pain since the day you died. Hurt and abandoned for no reason. A racist crime you could call treason. Twisted minds that hurt the boy. Left her to be fragile like a little small toy. A bad influence is all it takes to make a tremendously disappointing mistake. Stephen Lawrence, an unforgotten soul, who got caught between an unbearable role, the victims who made most lost change, without young Stephen, nothing will ever be the same. His family fought for his every right since the 22nd of April on the night he died. Stand up for what you believe in, speak for yourself. You can be rich in your heart and not in your health. Hi, my name is Esther and today I'm going to be visiting the Cooperative Academy of Leeds' Stephen Lawrence Group leader, Mr Thompson. On April, the group will be travelling to Manchester to visit the Cooperative Academy branch there at, to give them a performance on diversity. Stephen Lawrence Education Standard is about um, us, us as a school coordinated some of the values that we felt celebrated the life of Stephen Lawrence. Just for a, a pen portrait of Stephen Lawrence, and Stephen Lawrence was a young, black, 70-year-old student who was brutally murdered about 20 years ago at St. London. So as a way of, of reflecting on his life and his ambitions, we, within the academy, try to um, raise aspiration and celebrate diversity as a whole. Um, could you tell us more about the trip we're going to? Okay. First of all. Right. We, as a as a co as a another you know, part cooperative school, we have we've been invited to the Manchester Academy, where a group of our students, about 15 students, will be going to the Manchester Academy, and we'll be doing a number of uh, workshops and um, assembly items. That includes a fashion show, which again celebrates our cultural diversity from both African, Asian, Caribbean, European, and other diverse race within our school our academy as a whole and also we'll be um, giving them a, a, a brief portrait of the things that we feel that celebrate diversity within our academy. And lastly, do you think your performance, your students' performance will impact the students of Manchester? I, I definitely hope so. I, I feel how a, how a student here at this academy uh, leads, uh, 
has been influential in that we are a diverse school with over 71 languages uh, from numerous country, countries and cultures that will se show celebration of differences and that differences are important and that being different is something to be celebrated, not something that we should shun away. That's all. Thank you. I'm Esther and this was an interview about diversity. Our academy has taken part in many activities to promote the message of Schools of Sanctuary. A School of Sanctuary is a school that embraces and welcomes all pupils and gives them a safe and helpful environment to learn and grow. To find out more about this message, our reporter Rosie spoke to Ms Vince about this. School Sanctuary. Schools of Sanctuary is a school that is safe and welcoming place for those seeking sanctuary, like refugees. This could be those who, like, whose lives are in danger in their own country and are wanted a place to be safe and accepted. Our school does lots of things for the School of Sanctuary, like assemblies to inform students. I recently interviewed Miss Vince about the Schools of Sanctuary. Um, so School of Sanctuary is um, a school that provides a welcoming place for students who are seeking a place of safety, for example, refugee and asylum seekers. What is the school doing to promote the School of Sanctuary? Um, so the school already does many of the things um, that are required to be a School of Sanctuary. For example, we have programmes to welcome new students and we have buddy systems for them. Um, but then we're doing some extra things, so for example, this week and last week we did assemblies for the school about what it means to be a school of sanctuary and we're going to have some positions of responsibility for students, for example, student interpreters to um, translate for parents and new students and we're going to train them. Uh, we're going to have student um, welcoming committee with students with responsibility and then all these students will get a badge to wear to show their, what their position is. And how can we get involved? Um, um, but you can take part in the committee, you can um, take on one of these roles. There are also going to be activities going on in lessons. Um, so for example, one of the English classes in Year 8 have already taken it on board and started, they've written some letters to the Prime Minister and they're going to do some activities and hopefully they might do another assembly in June for Refugee Week. And there are also going to be activities in the city about Schools of Sanctuary because it's a city-wide project, so some students can do some of those things. And there are going to be activities in coaching time to help understand um, and get involved. When is Refugee Week? The Refugee Week is in June, and I'll find it in the middle of June, I think. And yeah, there's going to be some things going on then. What's the school doing for Refugee Week? Uh, but we haven't been planned yet, so it would be really good to have some ideas about what to do. Um, and if people want to get involved, there will be some assemblies around that time because it's also Gypsy Roma History Month, so there's going to be some things for that which we're going to link together. Um, but we're looking for ideas about things that we could do. Do you think students accept the diversity of the school? I think the majority of the students are very accepting and very welcoming to new students, and many um, other schools and people come to the school to see what we do and get our ideas about how they can do things in their school. Do you think diversity in the school is beneficial? Yeah, definitely. I think we can really learn lots of things. I've learned lots of things from the students in the school about different cultures and different countries and how to get along with different people. This has been me and Rosie interviewing Miss Vince on the school sanctuary. The prom committee are currently planning for the Year 11 prom, which will be held in the summer. The mantis speaks for Miss Baines, who is on the committee. And to you, you Miss Baines and Miss Lacey, who are on the prom committee. What does prom mean to you? Um, for Year 11s, it's a really good way for them to celebrate finishing their exams. Um, they get to say goodbye to all the teachers and the friends that they've made. Um, and it's just a really fun night just to celebrate finishing school. Yeah, all the hard work for five years at school and moving on to the next stage, you might not see everybody again. So it's a nice way to celebrate all that. How do students collect the money to go to school? Well, we do have Vivos in school. So the Vivos turn into money, so that can go towards it, they can pay instalments. Um, if they, have, they don't have enough, they will pay cash. And also, as part of the committee, we do a lot of fundraising events. So that can go towards getting the ticket price down, um, or any decorations, balloons, and things like that. Where do students like to go for the um, For the students, I think it's just nice for them to dress up, have a really fun night with the friends. Um, yeah, and it's always in like a really nice hotel and stuff, which is somewhere that maybe they don't get to go to quite a lot. So it's just a really nice way to celebrate. 
what, what do people usually wear when they go to bed? Well, this is a chance to be an individual. We have big fancy frocks. You could wear, you know, sort of anything that you prefer. It's usually go big or go home, a lot of the students say. And the boys Get like, all dressed yeah. up in your fancy gear. The boys like to wear the suits and the tuxedos with the little bow ties and stuff. Yeah. So they all look really brilliant. Get as dressed up as you can. <laughs> what usually happens at prom? So Different we... years, it depends on the theme. Um, obviously you'd have a meal, so you have some food, you would mingle with staff, there's a lot of speeches or awards, um, and then at the end there's just a big disco, so everyone just gets up and dances and has a good time, lots of pictures taken. I know this year that they've decided they want to have a prom king and queen, so at some point we'll be doing a little ceremony to give someone a crown. Yeah. <laughs> How is your prom at school? Um, I actually didn't have a prom. Um, I think proms seem to be a, come a bit more popular over the last few years. Because yeah. obviously it's quite American, but it seems to have come over here. So it's, it's the year groups now that seem to be having them a lot more. Yeah, the same for me. I, I only had one in sixth form, so a sixth form prom is a lot different to a year 11 prom. But we always have really good fun at the school proms, so we get to <laughs> have a bit of a good night as well. <laughs> Are there any exclusives? An exclusive, um, the theme for this year that the prom committee have decided on is the Grammy Awards. So it's all glitz, glamour, and we're going to have some awards to give out to students. Thank you, Ms. Lucy and Ms. Baines. Cast of production is being showcased at the Phoenix Dance Theatre. Our reporter, B, interviewed two members of the production and Miss Hamilton. Hello, we're at the Corruptive Academy of Leeds, um, interviewing Miss Hamilton and Miss Wheatley about cats. So how long have you been performing Miss Wheatley? Um, I've been performing probably since I was about six years old. Um, so for the la but professionally, I've probably been performing for the last ten years. And then in terms of working with young people in schools for the last six. So my overall experience spans over about twenty years. Um, Miss Hamilton, how long have you been dancing and doing drama and I started dance classes when I was three, and I've been dancing ever since. Do you enjoy it? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will usually start working on a dance the week before that the students are going to um, learn it. Um, but on the day, it can change. It just depends um, if you know, something might not work, so we might change it on the day. So don't you ever feel like you're going to make a dance this week before, and then the next day you did this movie, you like, changed it, and you just forgot what you've done? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm quite good at remembering them, um, but sometimes I can do it in my head a couple of days later and I don't like it and I have to start all again. Um, when is the performance of Cats? It's Friday the 18th of July at Phoenix Dance Theatre in Leeds Town Centre. Our students show commitment and dedication because all their rehearsals are done after school in their own time. So. Um, it just shows how committed they are to this performance because the attendance is brilliant mm -hmm. and when they are there they're so enthusiastic so both me and Miss Wheatley are very proud. Um, how did Phoenix Dance Theatre get involved with it? Uh, they worked with us last year in regards to our school performance and also because Miss Hamilton is also affiliated with Phoenix Dance Theatre and she's worked with them for a long long time. And do you enjoy dancing with kids and by yourself, just having fun? Yeah, I, mean, I, I love dance, um, always have done. Um, that's performing and teaching. Um, I couldn't imagine my life without it, to be honest. That's what makes me happy. <laughs> All right, um, thank you for letting us interview us. Yeah. We hope your performance goes well. Some of us might be coming in to watch it soon. Some of us are performing in it. <laughs> We'll now go over to Kelsey and Henry at the sports desk. Hi, I'm Henry. I'm going to present you with the school sports news. The Cooperative Academy Year 11's football team are at the top of the league just over Johnson Newton. The Year 11's have raised over £4,000 to their trip to Holland. They did a raffle and worked to the Cooperative shop for the day. They will be going to Holland on the 3rd of Thursday. 
on Thursday the 3rd and will be coming back on the Sunday the 6th of April. And I'm going to talk about the Tour de France, now running from the 6th of July to Sunday the 27th, 2014, the 101st Tour de France will be made up of 21 stages with a distance of 3,600 kilometres. Nine flat races, five hill races, six mountain stages with five altitude finishes, one individual time trial and two days rest. From Harrogate to Leeds, 190 kilometres, York to Sheffield, 200 kilometres, Cambridge to London, 159 kilometres. After the United Kingdom, they will fly over for the 20th Grand Depart. The Tour de France will go through Belgium and Spain. Bradley begins and Chris Flynn will try and have another victory for Team Sky, an English team. And finally, the Academy held a guild theme day on diversity on the 12th of December 2013. Our reporters were there on the day. On the 12th of December 2012, our school had a diversity day with different sorts of activities. Well, the activities included blind football, dance, Roman music and art, diversity fashion show and lots more inside coaching. Our school news crew did a few interviews from staff, students and visitors on how they felt about the diversity day and what they were doing. So hi, here I am with our art teacher, Miss Brown. Hello. And she's helping everyone make carnival masks today. So Miss, tell us more about your carnival masks. What we're doing, we're we'll making carnival masks. We're we'll making them as bright, as colourful and as exciting as we possibly can. And then we're looking at the subject of diversity in a lot of ways. So what makes it all different? Some students took part in wheelchair basketball with a visitor that came to school. There we have Mr. Ward doing cheerleading and being funny as usual. We miss him now that he's left. The main cheerleaders were Shauna, Kinga, Crystal and Lakeisha. They've been practicing for weeks in school and have come together to sh with the school to show their performance. I think the Paralympics did a lot for changing my opinion on the disabled sport. I, went, I was fortunate enough to see the Blind Olympics at the Olympic Games and I was amazed when I went in and they told me I had to be absolutely silent. But if you hear the bell, without, the, without your eyesight, you're only reliant on your hearing. So the crowd needs to be silent. I thought that's amazing how well some of these players can play with no eyesight. Yeah, carnival next. Are you looking forward to that? Yeah, kind of. Okay, thank you. We've had a strange season that slashes since the start of the month. With light showers lasting throughout the day and heavy clouds hanging in the sky, We've had chilly starts in the morning that lasted for quite a while but warmed up throughout the day with light gusts of winds. Temperatures started off at a chilly 5, degree, five degrees rising to a warm 8 but so far we'll have a chilly week. <laughs> the week. Let's hope that we'll have a sunny time.